Good morning, everybody. Greetings from the tiny little Sedona. Every time I start recording a video, he's like, no, talk to me, talk to me. Um, started saying greetings from the tiny little town of Holly Springs, Mississippi. That's where I spent the night last night. And um, wow, talk about, talk about culture shock, right? I am in the deep south. I am in the land of yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, thank you, ma'am. Um, the town itself is, like I said, it's tiny. It's literally crumbling. Like I, I passed some buildings in um, on the main street that look like they've been abandoned for years. On my way to that main street, I passed a couple of huge old plantation homes with meticulously groomed, you know, yards. Well land and landscaping and I was gonna stop and take pictures but number one I just barely got on the road and number two let me close this window number two um, I thought to myself why they're just a grim reminder of Mississippi's awful awful past with regards to slavery and segre segregation and people's rights I mean fight for um, freedom and I was like, nah, I don't really need pictures of that. So I didn't. <clears throat> um, and by comparison, most of the homes that I'm passing by are like really run down. The roofs are literally peeling right off. The people are so friendly. And I hadn't really expected that because I remember back in the 60s, my parents and I drove down to Clearwater, Florida and um, my dad pulled into a gas station. I think I was like seven years old, seven, eight years old, and pulled into a gas station and sat there and waited. And this was back in the day when all the gas stations were full service, right? If you're one of my younger followers, you wouldn't even remember. But back in the day, these were uniforms and little, you know, little caps and stuff like that. And they'd come out and um, while they were gassing up your car, they checked your fluids, um, checked your oil and transmission fluid, checked your, um, <clears throat> if you, if you had a newer car that had windshield washers, they checked your windshield washer fluid, um, and they gave away free stuff, free mugs, free glasses, free towels, all kinds of stuff. So my dad sat there and he waited and waited and waited and nobody came out, nobody came out tooted the horn a couple of times and still nobody came out we could see the fella sitting in the you know in the attendance booth and then finally after about 10 minutes he come walking over and he says um we don't we don't serve your kind here now he's a white guy obviously my dad's a white guy well maybe not so obvious um but he was and um my father was like i i, I don't i don't know what you mean and he said, I saw your plate when you were pulling in, goddamn northerner. We don't serve your kind. We had Connecticut plates on the car. And and he said, but I'm almost out of gas. He said, well, that's your problem. Maybe you ought to turn around and head home. <laughs> so I didn't know quite what to expect because it's been a long, 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 long time since I've been this far south. There's a nice looking swamp over there. I don't think I'd want to break down on that stretch of road right there. Um, so anyway, my dad had no choice but to get back in the car and, and drive on. So I wasn't really sure what to expect with regard to, you know, how things have changed. But people have been so polite and so friendly. And, you know, after the first few, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, thank you, ma'am, um, all from, from uh, people of color, by the way. Um, I didn't really have any interactions with uh, white folks, but everyone has been so polite and so kind and um, just passing by a couple other houses with the roofs barely hang up. That one's got a couple of windows broke out. The stark differences between the haves and the have-nots remind me a lot of Vermont. You guys know what I'm talking about. You drive by some homes and they, you know, the house sits in the middle of two acres of perfectly manicured lawn and then 
happened to drive into downtown Newport and start driving around some of the, the beautiful old buildings that have now been converted into apartment buildings and there's a huge difference. Well, same here, but even, even more so. Um, anyway, enough about that. There's a lot of swamp down here. call coming in. Decline that. Um, anyway, not a fan of swamps. I know the kind of things that live in swamps. And as much as I love animals, I'm not looking to make any new friends. The kinds with scales and big teeth. And I hear the mosquitoes down here even bigger than the ones in Vermont. So I just keep driving in my own business. Um, anyway, yesterday was a good day. The weather was spectacular all day long. Um, and I'm really proud of myself. I have to tell you, I'm really proud of myself. I started out in Oklahoma in the morning. I drove all the way across Arkansas because I promised my daughter I would not stop no matter what. Um, that's a whole nother story. Arkansas is a whole nother story um, with regard to Makito. Anyway, I drove from Oklahoma straight through Arkansas um, dipped up into Tennessee and then dipped back down into uh, Mississippi and I will make um, I will make gosh my phone is doing all kinds of weird things I will make um, Alabama in one hour and 43 minutes according to my GPS if I don't stop anywhere um, travel the past few days I haven't said anything before now has been hard. Um, that, that first week that I was on the road with all that white knuckle driving because the car was suffering so badly. Um, I literally was driving for hours and hours on end with my hands clutching the steering wheel with a death grip. My whole body was tense and rigid. And, and as a result, um, it started to affect my, my left shoulder. And I could feel like you know, the beginnings of frozen shoulder setting in, and I was like, oh, come on, that's the last thing I need, because when I started this trip, I'm still healing a torn meniscus in my right knee that happened um, last October, and, you know, I know a lot of people run off and have surgery, and but I did the research, and man, surgery can be just as problematic as letting it heal by itself, so me being who I am, I chose natural healing and um, you know the only thing is is it's, it's a process our bodies are designed to heal themselves naturally it's just you have to be patient and that's something that our culture is seriously lacking these days is patience for anything I swear we have the shortest attention spans in the history of the world um, so anyway that's been making slow progress and actually having to use it normally to climb in and out of the roof nest, you know, on a ladder and stuff like that. It's really helped him. Um, you know, and a friend of mine, we were doing a healing circle um, about a month or so back, and she said that the message that she got from her helping spirits, her power animals, was to stop babying him. And at first I was a little offended, and then I thought about it, and I realized, you know what? She's right. I have been babying him. I, I let the other knee do all the work. I... I just been babying it, and so uh, that had no choice but to stop as I got ready to leave for this trip, and then on this trip, because there's just no no time or space to baby anything that's got itself a little boo boo, and doesn't whoop. Car heading toward me in my lane, trying to pass the semi. Thank you very much. Um, ooh, lots and lots and lots of um, oh shoot. The, the word just went right out of my head. Moss. Moss hanging off the cypress trees. I love that. So beautiful. Um, anyway, so this, this problem with the shoulder started to set in about six days ago. And at first, this, the left shoulder was really frozen. And then I, you know, I forced it to move. I drive and rotate it forward and rotate it backward. And, um, 
you know, stretch it and do whatever I could to keep it mobile. Um, so the shoulder itself, my shoulder joint's doing a little better, but now the pain has transferred down the tendon from that connects to my shoulder to my elbow, and that whole area, that whole area is just killing me. My bi ow, ow, ow. my bicep on, on my left arm feels like I've been bench pressing, you know, or doing tricep presses with 50 pound weights, and it is just killing me. But that said, <laughs> so what? <laughs> right? So what? I got no time to, to baby it and, and feel sorry for myself. I have to I have to do what I have to do every day. Get the roof nest up, get the roof nest back down the next morning. Um, I am more in love with that with that piece of gear every time I sleep in it. I'll tell you what, there's nothing like getting off the road after driving, you know, eight, ten, twelve hours and flipping a few latches and watching it pop up hooking up the ladder and, and being ready to go to bed in five minutes. Um, Bella has fine, she's right next to me over here, my co-pilot. Um, she's finally gotten used to the routine. So when all the other animals have been put to bed at night and everything's quiet and I call her, she knows where she's going. The first few nights she was really scared being carried up the ladder, um, really made her nervous. But now, you know, as soon as I scoop her up, she knows where we're going and when, you know, I start to climb the ladder and she sees the open window on the roof nest, she, she puts her paws out and like tries to climb up. And then when I get up in the morning, of course, when I get up in the morning, I got to pee first thing. There's no, no waiting around. No, you know, getting the dog, nothing. Go to the bathroom. So, um, you know, I'll tell her when I wake up, you stay right here and be quiet. Shh, be quiet. Because sometimes I'm awake early enough that, you know, there's trucks or, or whatever around. I don't want her barking and waking everybody up because that's just rude. Um, so now she just lays down, waits for me to go in and go pee. And I come out, get her down, put her leash on, get Casper down, put his leash on, get their food and their supplements ready, pour them a bowl of water and then they eat breakfast. And if I've slept in a Love's truck stop, most of them have really, really nice dog parks. Um, so I'll okay Turn right all right don't mind the GPS um, you know they'll eat their breakfast get some water and then I'll let them run around at a dog park for a little while to relieve themselves get everybody loaded back up get on the, the next ride on the US 72 East okay hold on I have a decision here to make next ride. Okay, 72 East. Alright. Continue on US 72 East for 95 miles. 95 miles on 72 East. Alright, let's do this thing. Um, <clears throat> beautiful morning, by the way. Um, so then they'll run around. Continue on US 72 East for 95 miles. You know I love my GPS, but damn, she's rude sometimes. Um, her name is Gertrude, by the way. Um, I used to, I used to call her Geraldine because that was my grandmother's name. But then I decided I spent way too much time swearing at her to call her by my grandmother's name. It felt disrespectful, so I don't do it anymore. I renamed her Gertrude, which also used to be the alter ego of my youngest kiddo. When, when, um, they were younger, you know, and they would do something really, really naughty or get themselves in trouble or whatever, um, the rest of the family developed this this thing where, where we would say, oh, well, surely it wasn't Sierra. It must have been Gertrude. So that, that felt more appropriate to me to call the GPS Gertrude. Anyway, um, dogs get their breakfast, get their water, get to run around a little bit in the dog park and relieve themselves. Or if we're, you know, someplace like a rest area or, or another place where I'm sleeping, um, they just relieve themselves and we pack everybody up. I get myself some coffee because coffee is necessary. Um, if there's a speed trap ahead, there's a speed trap ahead. Me who chronically drives under the speed limit better be careful about that. Um, so once I'm a little bit caffeinated, then 
usually I'll go into the first restroom I come to. If it's at a truck stop, there's one right there. I'll go in and clean up and um, try to make myself look a little more human. This morning, I did not do that. So I took one look in the mirror and I was like, ah, it's good enough. I can't believe how much my standards of um, beauty and, and uh, you know, all that shit about presenting myself to the world has changed. It's like, what you see is what you get, baby. If you don't like it, don't look. I don't know what to tell you. Um, let me take a sip of coffee. Anyway, I covered four states last night. I mean, yesterday. I feel really good about that. <laughs> um, and one little faux pas that I made, and I'm so glad that I was on the phone with a close friend um, when I pulled in. I was tired, been on the road all day, and thought, oh, good, there's a Love's Truck Stop. You know, that's that's that feels like home to me. I've shared that before. We'll pull in there, and that's where we'll spend the night. And I pulled in. I chose the spot that I thought would be good to, you know, set up the roof nest without being uh, a nuisance to people around me and stuff like that. And this friend and I were still on the phone. And I'm, I'm really grateful for that. Nothing happens by mistake, right? Had I not been on the phone with my friend, I would have shut the car off, popped the roof nest up, um, you know, and got ready to spend the night. Um, but because I was on the phone, I sat there and just had a chance to watch while I was talking. I told her, oh my gosh, this guy's going to get hit by a car. There was a guy that walked by um, high as fuck. I mean, this dude was high as fuck. Weaving in and out of the middle of the road. And there's semis going by. I mean, this is a main thoroughfare. And I thought, geez, I'm going to sit right here and watch this guy get creamed by one of these semis. And then I looked across the street at this, this raggedy old hotel, which at first I thought was decent looking. But no, the longer I looked at it, I was like, oh, hell no. And then I'm still on the front with my phone and I'm telling her what I'm seeing. And she's like, Esme, I don't, I don't think you should stay there. And I was like, yeah, I'm beginning to wonder. Across the street from me were, this guy did finally make it across the street. Um, watching him walk up to another guy. And I don't know what was going on there. But then, but then I see, um, you know, a, uh, a working gal walk by. Now, I'm not a city gal. But I used to live in New York City when I was real young. I, I know a working gal when I see one. And I was like, holy shit. There's... <laughs> I told her, I said, my, my friend on the phone, I was like, prostitute just walked by. She's like, that that's not a place where you need to be tonight. I said, yeah, I'm beginning to feel that. Um, speed oh, another speed trap. Um, uh, da -da -da -da. Oh. So, so then I'm still sitting there and I was like, I think I'm going to need to get back on the road and, and, you know, move along. And at, just as I was saying that, here comes, here comes another working gal. Now, no judgment, right? Sex work is, is real work. And in, in this economy and in this day and age, people do what they got to do to get by. Um, but the whole area, it was in West Memphis, West Memphis, Tennessee. And I thought, mm, I don't know. I don't know. People can do some pretty strange things when they're, you know, strung out. Another swamp. Um, and I just, I just don't need to be a part of that. So I said goodbye to my friend. And I looked at the dogs. And they were thinking, oh, good. We're going to bed. You know, blah, blah, blah. No, we're not going to bed. So I got back on the road. And I asked um, my GPS where the next closest um, Love's truck stop was along my route. And I was told 28 miles, and I'm like, I'm all about it. I got enough energy to drive another 28 miles. So I did, and it was it was beautiful. Beautiful dog park, beautiful, um, you know, um, travel plaza. So that's where we stopped, and I actually managed to get a, a, uh, a spot way over in the corner um, of the parking lot underneath some trees so it was shaded it was beautiful it was clean it was full of other RVs and of course trucks um, so I felt right at home and that's where we ended up 
that's where we ended up spending the night. Um, I guess I, I said all of that to say that, you know, that's one thing that, I mean, I always, I always function by my intuition. And if something feels wrong, then, then it's wrong. And if something feels really good, even if it doesn't make sense, then, then I do that because my gut says so. That, that intuition, that inner knowing, I was almost going to say has grown on this trip. I don't think it's grown. I think I'm just paying more attention to it. Um, you know, uh, there's been a few times when I've totally ignored my GPS because my gut has been like, no, don't turn right there. Keep going on the route that you're on. And I'm like, okay. And it has always worked out for me. Same thing last night. I mean, I could have overridden that gut instinct, that deep down gut feeling that is so primal that, that, that protects us. Um, you know, and just said, oh, I'll, I'll be fine. You know, I'll load my gun. I'll bring it up next to me. And, um, of course, I also have a neck knife. I wear that all the time. All the time. Um, which means that, well, never mind, never mind. But I, I, you know, so I have protection all the time. And whenever I sleep, I always take my car key and I put it right next to... There's a speed trap ahead. Okay, there's a speed trap ahead. Oh, and this time I really am exceeding the speed limit. Okay. Um, so the key is right next to me. So if I heard anybody like right outside my vehicle or, um, heaven forbid, climbing the roof nest ladder, the first thing I would do would be turn the car alarm on. And in most cases, that would deter most anyone, especially in a public, you know, public area. Um, and then... Next after that is the neck knife, and then in states where I wouldn't end up in jail mandatorily for one year, um, then my firearm is right next to me. Anyway, intuition, that gut instinct, that inner knowing, that little voice that says, no, don't do this, or yes, do that, this is a good idea. I'm, I've really learned to hone into that because it is a gift to us, especially as women. So many women have gotten in really bad situations and dire straits because we are taught from an early age to be nice, to be quiet, to be polite, to be helpful, to be, you know, all of those things. Even when our gut is saying it goes against our best interest, you know, for our own personal safety or whatever. Um, so I'm really learning to discard that early um, childhood and young woman programming and listen to that primal gut instinct and follow its direction. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much all I've got for this morning. I rambled longer than I intended to. Um, I will be in Alabama by 11 o'clock this morning my time. I think I'm still in the central time zone. I'm not 100% sure. I have to ask. Days have become a blur. Time zones have become a blur. So when I want to call people or talk to people, I have to, I literally have to ask Google what time zone I'm in. Um, sometimes I don't even know what state I'm in. If I didn't pay attention to the welcome to whatever, you know, on the, on the GPS, I sometimes am hard pressed to be able to tell you what state I am, but there's a speed trap ahead. Whoa, another speed trap! Damn. Tell you what, these local boys are out in force this morning. What what is today? It's not a holiday. It's Wednesday, right? Is it Wednesday? Sounds good. We'll go with Wednesday. Um. Anyway, I'm gonna quit rambling and and pay attention to the road. It's really beautiful out here today. Um. According to my clock, it's 9.48 a.m. and it's already 79 degrees and I may have to ditch this flannel shirt real soon. Anyway, you all have a great day. I guess the takeaway from this morning is learn to trust your intuition and listen to that inner voice. It's not going to steer you wrong. I love you guys. I appreciate you following along. 
Um, if you've missed any videos, most of them are uploaded to my YouTube channel. I suggest and would really appreciate if you would go to YouTube and search for Wild at Heart um, and subscribe. And if you watch any videos that you hadn't already seen, go ahead and like them. Um, I would really be grateful for that. So you guys have a beautiful day and I will talk to you, I'm not sure when. Bye.